we have assembled the Montebello, and just um, Tuesday we did the second assemblage, and it turned out that uh, we're going to we've we've already redone it once or checked ourselves once the next day, and we'll check ourselves again next week. But um, we brought in one parcel of Cabernet that hadn't gone in yet because it wasn't finished uh, malolactic when we did the first assemblage in, in late January, early February. We brought it in immediately because we do two glasses. We take, in this case, the first assemblage and, and in two glasses and then to one of the two add the, actually the first edition was like a 9% edition. It was a good sized parcel. And, um, and then mix them up and taste them. And, and it was so clear that the 9% edition took it. I mean, the base was beautiful. Right? And uh, did you taste it on, uh, yeah, so you've already tasted the, the first assemblage. So, and the second as well, the other day, or, oh no, we didn't, we haven't done it. It's coming up, that's right. Anyway, so, so uh, that was clear. And then we had one other parcel of Cabernet also. And, the first time we tasted it, uh, it was split right down the middle as far as the votes. And um, so we then did, we said, all right, uh, let's do it again, because when we come to that final line, and that was, and that was all, because there was nothing else, we had tasted through the four or five possible parcels. The others were just perfect estate Cabernet. They, by structure, they were not uh, as big and long-lived and intense as Montebello. Um, so we then, we then sat down with uh, two glasses as the final because we were split and then what we do is we taste a couple of previous vintages and I've actually got by pure chance uh, a little taste for us to do that but the bottles were sitting there overnight open, not, not gas, not court, so you know, so we'll see if they're, they're they've got 24 hours of of advance on them from when we tasted them, so we'll have to maybe taste with a grain of salt. But what we did was we tasted it against these two versions of 09, against uh, 07, 06, 05, Montebello. And when we did that, um, I didn't change my vote. I was one of the guys that wanted this second edition. And I didn't change my vote, but I thought I had. And the other guy who had voted for it with me uh, didn't. He didn't change his vote, but he thought he had. Ah. And all the rest of the guys changed their vote <laughs> and, ah. and, and didn't think they had changed it. And so we ended up voting for the addition of this second uh, parcel, which we'll taste today. Hmm. And just, as I say, we'll repeat it. Um, and we think we changed our opinion because we had um, the comparison with the five, six, and seven. And that the other, the one that I preferred, was more like the five, six, and seven than the wine that the, the other guys had voted for. And that without knowing it, they just, mm. they changed their vote. And so, so we'll taste. But what I can give you in here is the 08, because we finished the final assemblage of the 08. Uh, we had a bunch of uh, people, Genesis and, and uh, Michel Betin from France mm -hmm. and a number of others up here for a little 50th uh, anniversary gathering uh, 59 to 09 kind of thing. And um, the first thing I did to them uh, was to, when they walked in the door, was to hand them at 10 in the morning, hand them two glasses. Because, you know, it's one thing, I mean, that's what I'll do to you in there is, is mix them up. Because don't you think it's much more interesting to have to work a little bit than to just be handed a glass, told what it is, and you taste it? You know, kind of thing. So, anyway, they walked in at 10 in the morning and we handed them all two glasses. And we said, I said, last week, Eric presented me, it's always double wine for me, uh, two glasses, and said, what do you think? And we both, and we tasted, and we agreed that this one glass was better, it was, was a step up. They were both very similar. was a step up from the other. And I said, okay, what, what is it? And he said, well, it's, and I said, it's Cabernet, it's gotta be the 08. And he said, yeah, it's the 08. And I added nine tenths of 1% addition of a very fine first press. And that's what we both voted for, uh, was the addition of the, so I handed this group of international experts two glasses and said, 
which is the better wine, and 13 out of 14 voted for the same wine we did. So kind of, well, we, we were going to add it anyway, but you know, we just thought it was fun to just see them because less than what well, let's call it one percent addition, and they were two different wines. I mean, a lo so much in common, and yet you had a clear preference. So anyway, what we'll taste now is the final, final 08 that will be bottled in early June uh, <clears throat> that includes that little 1% of uh, first press. So. Can you be overruled? <laughs> Can I personally? Can you be overruled in these tasting panels? Okay, patterns? it's, it's uh, what, it, what it amounts to is um, it's so seldom that we don't agree to a fair, de a fair degree um, if I really feel strongly that, that I'm tasting well and, um, you know, it, it would never occur that, that I am the one plus and there are seven negatives on that wine. I mean, it's just, you know, uh, it's, I, unless I'm having a terrible day, in which case I'd know it, you know, uh, and that's, that, that particular situation has never occurred. But um, it's usually a mix of votes and so, Let's say that we had three pluses and five minuses on a wine that I voted plus on. And, uh, well, one, who are the other two pluses? If the winemakers vote plus, Eric and John Olney, then, then I'm sorry the other guys lose, you know, kind of thing. But that's the only time that we kind of push it. And if, for example, um, I really felt strongly about my decision on that, um, we would carry on the way we did with this 09, both glasses to the next to the next trial, and and try it and try it again. So yeah, it's it, or uh, and this is I mean I can't tell you this is this would be one in 50 tastings or God knows how many major decision tastings that this would ever occur that I would say let's taste again tomorrow kind of thing, uh, and and you know then. You know, so so I don't, I don't, I certainly don't overrule. But you know, I, and and if, and and yet, if it is the winemakers that are on one side and everybody else on the other, it's the winemakers who get the, you know, get the ruling. So we do, we we go around, we taste, uh, we then vote, and for a moment it's um, confidential. That is, we all hold our pad up so other people can't see it, <laughs> and Eric notes down our vote, you know, on each wine. And then we start in with the um, with Eric's uh, assistant, our assistant winemaker, Shun, and because he's the most recent to join us, and we go around the table from uh, least time at Ridge to most time at Ridge. So um, John, David Gates, and then Eric, and myself, are the last, and and so that nobody gets to listen to us before they before they talk. I mean, they voted already, and we know what the votes are. But you, it goes around and you say, okay, I, I voted A plus and here's, here are my notes and, and here's I voted B minus, here are my notes, you know, and so on. And, and we go all the way around the table. It takes a long time, but it's really good because everybody has different sensitivities. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing um, how differently people can see tannin. Um, so the, that level or, or even the style of tannin between grainy or very fine or, you know, um, all of the variations, how in that same line you can have people who see that tannin differently and so, and it comes into their boat. But no, it's, 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 a, it's the most fun of anything we do. I mean, because it's the fruition of the entire year for, say, the Montebello or the Geisbell or the Lim, any of the wines. Um, and so David Gates, as a director of the vineyard and his assistant is just incredibly good taster and great guy is Caleb Mosley. And he, uh, the two of them are there and they see parcel by parcel what they know what happened in that parcel and what they did. And then they see the wine and they see the wine tasting and it's just, it's really a, a culmination of, for both the vineyard and then of course the, what happened in fermentation and, and here. So it's, it's really fun. Anyway, 